this text, for example, it's um, it's a text I wrote um, in my in my diary when I was 14 years old, and um, and it was uh, it's something I wrote that uh, that at that at that moment I wanted to change the world and to feel uh, freedom and peace everywhere around me, and I wanted to save the planet and to save the people. And uh, so it was a very strong manifesto at that moment. And, um, and it's true that now I read it, I, I found like so many, um, uh, I, f I found it very naive in a way, and there is a lot of mistake of sentences and things, but, uh, but I am, I am very touched about the fact that I, I had this idea of uh, uh, doing good things around me at that, at that moment. And uh, the way I, I choose to, sh to, to show it, uh, like in a big, uh, in a large format, in several parts, and uh, like if it was like a big manifesto, and I choose to erase it. <laughs> So not all, but uh, you will only see a few words on, on that. It's, uh, it's a question of, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, uh, it's not a shame to have read, uh, uh, to have wrote that when I was younger, but it's just a sign to show that time is passing by and maybe things change. And, uh, And that all the revolutionary idea just passed by. When when I wrote that, when I wrote that, when I did that, it was in December, just before the big terrorist attack in in France. That was in January, and um, I read. I, I, have, I have read so many interviews of young people saying how they started to be involved in a terrorist group. And most of them were young and lost, and they just wanted to save the world in a way. So when I realized that, it was a very strange feeling that if I, if I could be like influenceable, or brainwashed, maybe people can do a lot of bad thing about my uh, young naiv naivety. Uh, and, uh, and then it's, it was a strange feeling that, that uh, it make me understand in a way how a young people can be uh, taken in a dark side of uh, 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 political involvement. Mm. I really thought also that we we have in a way to be more uh, to understand that it's also very easy to be brainwashed by political uh, question and uh, in Europe for example a lot of people were uh, brainwashed in the 30s <laughs> and it's easy to to think that it's not only because of uh, a question of identity or, or things it's difficult to find the, the good angle to accept the, the civilization or the, the wor world around us of the society. The painting is a, is a series about memory also. Uh, my idea when I start this uh, series of painting was uh, to do something with my originary culture and uh, uh, that I don't know so much, in fact, because I grew up in France and I wasn't really educated with uh, uh, with a Moroccan um, uh, way of life. And uh, when I started my art school, I, I discovered that um, uh, 
that there were a very rich culture of ornament and the uh, architecture on the on the and I was uh, I wanted to learn how to do that because I thought that I will understand something from my background if I learn to do this uh, geometrical stars, uh, very symmetrical. And, um, and I, I started to apply as a good student all these stars, this symmetry on these things. And, um, and then I understand one day that I cannot act always as a good student. So I start to deconstruct a little bit this ornamental system. And uh, it ended like that as a chaotic uh, uh, ornamental uh, painting. And uh, it's also uh, something about memory, about uh, what I will do here with my uh, uh, political involvement, here what I can do with my uh, cultural background, and uh, all the way I work about this, this it's, uh, all the way I work about it, it's uh, to erase or to deconstruct. And in the series of uh, the black clouds, it's uh, how I install it as uh, the show is over or ended or just finished. So the, the link between that is that um, uh, the time passed by and we are in front of some uh, ru ruins and how we can restart from that point. After one point, not in the beginning, but very late in the history, uh, uh, some uh, uh, religious man decided that it's forbidden to show people. Before, it was only forbidden to show yeah, idols. Now, after that, it was forbidden to show uh, people, and they start to, to compulse, in a way, in ornamental things. So when you do um, symmetrical things, you can be able to reproduce everything in in an infinite way. And uh, then it was um, uh, touching the idea of the absolute and also the idea of the infinite. And it was a way to touch the idea of God in a way. So what happens if you break this symmetry and uh, you badly play with that? And uh, maybe there is no, not any more question of absolute, infinite, or, or good. Yeah, I always try to fight about that. It's really conceptual. It's a, it's a lot about, of course, uh, uh, meanings and uh, ID, but I really, I'm really uh, deeply attached that the, my work is really aesthetic in the beginning. You, you do not need to be so much conceptual when you see a destroyed, uh, a destroyed text. You just have the feeling that you have a text and it's destroyed and you have a little feeling about that. And it's the same with uh, the installation in general. So, of course, it's conceptual, but the first, always the first impact in an in a artwork on all artwork is the first is aesthetic. And uh, I'm really deeply attached to this idea of uh, the aesthetical uh, first layer. It's uh, because it cannot be another form than that. It's ended in that form, and that form is really well uh, assumed. And uh, it cannot be something else. It cannot be in colors because I show that it will be black in the most simple way. It cannot be in a painting, because in museum in general, all the texts of explanation and things are directly in the walls with any letter. So it's the, the formal aspect is really well defined, and it cannot be something else. So this is uh, the idea of the formalism. If it would be something I cannot write it in a piece of paper. It won't be the same at all. Because to have it, have it in big letters and in that format, it's like if I scream my text, <laughs> my text, and then I erase it. And how does it work with the paint? 
Uh, when I did that, it was the same. I decided in the beginning that it would be, when I show it in Tel Aviv, it's, that it's the same format than a painting. Because it's a, it's a format that are really physical for me. So I can go to the top and to, uh, to the border. And, um, and it's a writing process and erasing the writing. And the series of painting is a question of writing also. It's black line written in a, in a, in a, in a canvas. And all the canvas are made one after the other from the left to the right, like the Arabic way of writing. And uh, when you saw a canvas, and then you go to the other painting, to a painting to another, all the paintings are linked together. All the line, you can follow all the line from the first painting in the entrance to the last painting in the, in the, in the room. So you can really follow like that. So it's really a writing process. And so it was um, interesting for me to link these two forms of writing in a way on the, uh, uh, in, the same, in the same line. All the work are hang in the same way and you have all the same horizon line in the top of the painting on the, on the text, if you see it. There is like a level, the top level of everything. It really remember me the, um, the character destructor, the destroyed character uh, of uh, Walter Benjamin, when you have these uh, um, people that like to destroy things and it gives uh, a feeling of, uh, of uh, like adrenaline when you do uh, things uh, a little powerful in a way, or irreverentious. And then after when you have all the rain in front of you and everything is uh, deconstructed and destroyed, you can have a feeling of, uh, of freedom because you think, okay, what I will do next? Because then I erase and destroy everything, now I have to rebuild. And this feeling is really interesting because I, I feel that um, uh, the, the, the world is open in front of me and I can, uh, I can really restart, but I don't know where. So I always wonder what will be the next uh, step. But it's, uh, I, I never stop uh, in one feeling in a way. I know that it's something more glo global. Freehand. Yeah. My uncle, when I was uh, uh, very young, when I was around five or six, he explained me that when I will be able to trace a line without any tools, I could do a lot of things in my life. So I was always fascinated by doing freehand things and not with tools. I don't like tools so much. Or to the gesture. So gesture is very important. When, uh, when you see these traces, you can figure out that the painting was a little liquid. Uh, when you see the, the vinyl uh, letters in the floor, you can easily understand that uh, it's fall from the wall. And when you see the traces here on the white dust, you can understand that it was scratch. So you won't need nobody to explain you that somebody scratched the letters. They can, they can see, see it one point on the other. They can do the connection easily. So the simplicity of, uh, of gesture on the, on, the, on, on the form is really important for the 
public to understand how it was done. And when you understand how it was done, you can say, yes, I can do it myself. And this is what I want to people say, like, uh, yes, I can do it myself. Uh, the lines, I can do it themselves if they, if they want. I can have to be careful with the painting and to do it. And I like the fact that uh, uh, people can think that an artist is not exceptional and they can also be all become an artist if they want. And, uh, and I need the simplicity of gesture to make that projection possible. If I can do it, they can do it. If I can think that, they can think that. If I can be, uh, if I can deconstruct, they can deconstruct themselves. And it's really important, this uh, transmission of uh, possibility. The only question I can give them is why? <laughs> why? Why? How? And then when I understand how, I understand why. <laughs>